Do you struggle to understand the English tenses? We may have more tenses in the English language than you have in your own native language. And today, we're going to look at them and see what they do. In the next few videos, we're going to go a little bit more in-depth into what everything does, what they are, what they do, why you use them, when you don't use them, etc. But today's video is all about giving a general overview and an introduction to the English tenses. There are 12 of them that ESOL learners should be aware of, but which one are you going to use? Well, obviously, it all depends on the topic that you're talking about. Well, actually, it's all about the time frame when the action that you're talking about took place in. You've got 12 tenses to talk about, and that is what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hi there, I'm Ed Anguish from Speak English with Ed, where we help new ESOL speakers learn English to pass the self examinations. Today, we're going to be talking about tenses. So, let's jump straight in. The only way to learn is to talk. Pick the right tense. There are three tenses, or rather, there's three time frames. There's the past, which is already gone. There's the present, which is right now that we're living in. And then there's the future. They're not tenses, they're time frames. And then we've got three different styles for each time frame. So we've got a, a simple, we've got a continuous, there's a present and there's a present perfect. And we get these for all three time frames. So the simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous styles for each frame. That makes 12. So we've got 12 to look at. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the present simple tense. Let's talk about when we use it. When do we use it? Well, first of all, we'll talk about when we don't use it. And that is um, when we're talking about now, when we're talking about what we're doing right this minute. We don't use it when we're talking about um, things that are continuing now. So we, we don't use that. What we do do is we talk about things that are generally true right now. If, if it's true now, then we talk about it. So we can uh, say that the sun rises in the east every morning, right? It's a truth. The sun always rises in the east. I can say, um, I laugh at jokes when they're funny. They do, it's true. So you tell me a funny joke and I will laugh. I, I can't help it. It's just nature. It's true. So we use uh, the simple, the present simple tense uh, under these circumstances. Now, we also use them when we want to talk about habits and routines. So, like, now a habit is um, something that you, you, say, you can say, I always stroke my chin when um, I'm thinking. So you go, hmm. And you say, I always stroke my chin when I'm thinking. It's a habit. It's something people do. Or you can say, I knock on wood. When um, when I'm looking for good luck, for anything that's wanting good luck, first say knock on wood, and uh, that's that's a habit. Now a routine is slightly different. A routine is when you've got a few things that are bunched together. Now say for instance in the morning, you wake up, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, you go downstairs, you take the dog for a walk, let him relieve himself. Uh, take the dog for a walk, you come back, you have breakfast and then you catch the 8.45 bus and go uh, to work. So that is a little routine. And when you're talking about routines like that, you use the, you're use you using the, um, the uh, present simple tense. Okay. Now, we also use it when we're talking uh, about a timetable. Now, lots of things have got timetables. There's timetables for all sorts of things. But uh, typically, we've got timetable for the buses. You get a bus, you catch the um, 8.45 to college. You catch um, the 9.35 train to Edinburgh. You catch um, the 
345 flight to Dubai or wherever you're going, whatever it is you catch. These all have a timetable and they all use the, um, the present simple tense. So we use the present simple for when we're talking about things that are generally true. We use it when we're talking about habits and routines and we use it when we're talking about timetables. We do not use it when we're talking uh, about things that we are doing right now, this very minute. We don't do that. We just don't do that. Okay? Now, let's move on to um, the, the uh, present continuous tense. And we ask the question, when do we use the present continuous tense? when we're doing something continuously, what we're doing now. We talk about what we're doing now in the present continuous because generally speaking, what you're doing now is going to continue at least for a few minutes and then it'll stop and you'll do something else. Or it could be continuing all day, such as saying, uh, what are you doing now? Well, I'm working. You can say, I am working. Um, and you're going to be working all day. Or you could be working just for a few minutes and then it's lunchtime and you're going to stop working. So you, you use it in circumstances for what, you, what you're talking about now. You also use it when you talk about something that started in the past and it's ongoing, right? And it's still, it's still going on. Something that you started in the past. So uh, you might see your friend walking down the street that you've not seen for... 12 months, right? It is not a close friend, but it's an acquaintance. Let's say an acquaintance. Uh, and you meet this acquaintance and you say to him, how are you going on? What are you doing? I've not seen you for a while. Right? And he'll turn around and say something like, oh, I'm building a house. Right? Now, obviously, building a house is a long project. It's an ongoing project. So it's going to be continuing for a while. It might, he's not building it now, obviously, because you've just met him in the street, but it's an ongoing concern. So you use the present continuous when you're talking about ongoing concerns, just like this. You also use it uh, when something is planned for the future. When you've got a future plan, you do it, uh, you speak about it in the, um, uh, the present continuous. So um, somebody says, what are you doing in July? You say, oh, I'm going on my holidays. We're going to France. We're going abroad for our holidays. So you talk about that in the uh, continuous tense as well, the present continuous. So just to reiterate there, we use the tense to talk about what we're actually doing right now at this minute, right now. You, you would use it and say, I'm watching a video. Um, so you, whatever you're doing, you use the, uh, the continuous tense. You don't use the um, simple tense. You don't say, uh, I watch video. What are you doing? I watch video. No, you, I am watching a video as the continuous tense. You also use it when uh, for something that you've started in the past, uh, building the house, for example, and it's an ongoing project. And you, uh, you use it when something is planned for the future. I'm going on my holidays uh, next July, uh, or we're going to the mother-in-laws for Christmas, and this sort of thing. Now, don't forget, when you use this tense, you also use the verb to be. Now, the verb to be is subject dependent, right? So it depends what the subject is, whether it's um, I, you, he, we, she, it, etc. as to which verb you use. So make sure that you use the right verb when you're using whichever uh, pronoun that you're using or noun. If you want to watch a video, I'll put a link to one at the top of the screen where we talk about am, is and are. Uh, and how to use them correctly. I'll also link to it in the um, in the description below this video, uh, and I'll put all the links that we talk about in the description um, in the in this video as well. So um, 
watch that out if you if you want to watch it. So um, what's next? Right, present perfect. So the present perfect tense. When do we use that? Well, we use it when we want to talk about something that happened or started in the past and it's still happening now or it's still true in the pre at the present. Uh, for example, Mary, she's worked in this business for 20 years. So 20 years ago, Mary started working in this business and she's still working in this business. We can also use it to say, I washed the car this morning. Now, I washed the car this morning and this evening, well, it's still true. I washed the car this morning, so it's still true. So let's go back to Mary and, and starting back here, you would not say Mary has worked here last year. You don't say that. You say, Mary worked here last year. You would use the past simple, but you do not say Mary has worked here last year. You use a period of time. Mary has worked here for 20 years. Mary has worked here since July last year. You, you use either for or since to give a time frame from a place up to now. So you need a time frame, not a specific time. And you don't say, I have washed the car at 10 o'clock. You say, I washed the car at 10 o'clock. I have washed the car this morning, because this morning is a period of time. You say, uh, but you don't use this tense for when you're talking about a specific time. So the present perfect tense, when do we use the present perfect tense? We use it to talk about an action that has started in the past and are still going on today or is related to the present time. Such as, he's been sleeping all morning. So you could be talking about your teenage son who's still in bed at 12 o'clock on a morning, dinner time. And you're saying he's been sleeping all morning. This is a, a, a use where something happened, started this morning or it started earlier and it's been still happening now. It's still true. He's still asleep. He's still asleep now. Or you may know somebody who's building a business and you can sort of say she's been building her business for five years. It's continuous. It's still going on. So you um, talk about it in the present perfect continuous tense. Or you can use it to talk about an activity that repeats itself over time, a repeating activity. It's been started, but you've not finished it yet. And an example here is we've been going to the same hotel for our holidays for five years. This means that you intend to continue going to the same hotel for your holidays. You've been going for five years already and you intend to continue so you use the present continuous, uh, perfect continuous tense. So we use it uh, for an action that started in the past and it's still continuing. We use it to talk about an activity that started but hasn't finished yet. It's not completed, it's still, it's still ongoing. Or you use it to talk about a repeated action uh, that con that's continuing to repeat itself or it appears to be continuing to repeat itself. We go to the same hotel every year, right? Okay, so let's have a look at these four different styles in the other two tenses. A past simple. The past simple is used to talk about uh, an event which was started and completed before now. I washed the car this morning, so, I washed the car this morning, it was done, it started and it's completed. Uh, simple past tense or past simple tense. The uh, past continuous tense. This is used to talk about an action that took place over a period of time in the past. He was working in the garden yesterday. A period of time yesterday. A continuous action working working in the garden yesterday past continuous tense the past perfect tense is used to show that an action 
took place in the past before another action started in the past. We have finished a test before the bell rang. So you're in a test, you're doing an English exam maybe, uh, and you finished the test before the second action started, which was ringing of the bell. For the perfect continuous uh, in the past tense, now this is to show that an ac action started in the past and it continued on until a second action took place. He was working in the garden when it started to rain. So he's working in the garden and he kept on working in the garden until it started to rain. And then he stopped. He went in, had a cup of tea. Or he may have continued. It doesn't say. It just says he was working in the garden when it started to rain. So maybe he continued working in the garden. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say. But his first action was working in the garden. The second action was starting to rain. Now, let's look at the future tense. So the future simple tense, you want to talk about things that you either know are going to happen, you've got it planned, or um, you believe it's going to happen. So uh, I'm going to watch a movie tonight. You may have a plan, you've uh, arranged it, you're going to sit back, you could be watching it by yourself, you could be watching it with somebody else, it doesn't matter, but you, somebody said to you, what are you doing tonight? And you say, I'm going to watch a movie tonight. It's your plan, right? Your future plan. Now, we use the future continuous to talk about an action that will continue over a period of time in the future, right? So... I will be working abroad next month. You, you, you're going abroad, you, you're um, going anywhere abroad to another country uh, to work for one month for your job, okay? You're being sent away. Uh, it's a future continuing action. Uh, the perfect uh, future perfect tense shows that an action is going to be completed before another action is actually started. So if you're um, working in somebody's house, say for instance, um, they could be saying, how long will you be? And you could say, or oh, the job will be completed before you get back home. Before you get home, we'll have everything completed and you won't even know we've been in making a mess. So uh, you would use, this uses the perfect, the job will be completed, okay? This is the future, uh, the future perfect tense. Now the future perfect continuous tense uh, goes to a point and it looks back. It goes to a point in the, in the future and then it looks back to see how long an activity took place. So on Friday, he will have been working in the garden for a whole week. On Friday, he will have been working in the garden for a whole week so you, you you wherever you are now wednesday thursday you're looking forward to friday and you're saying on friday he'll have been working for a whole week right he's not been working a week yet but he will have been when it gets to friday this is how uh, occasions when you would use the perfect continuous tense now that's a brief look at all the 12 tenses over the next few weeks, I'll be talking about all the tenses in their own video. You'll see how they're used, you'll see when they're used, and you'll see how to create them. So make sure that you're subscribed and that you've rung the bell to let YouTube know that you want to be notified when we release them. Tenses are an important part of the CELT exams now. Um, uh, particularly the B1, because there is a requirement in there that you talk about and answer questions uh, about the future tense. So you need to be able to understand these tenses, because you will be tested on that. Most past tense verbs end with a D or an ED, but the ending sound is either D or T. Check out this video 
there'll be a link in the bottom there. Check out this video next uh, to see how to pronounce these uh, ending sounds correctly. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.